Oh, it says preparing. We're live streaming, yeah. So it's your group. Weird. All right, well, we're live. All right, giddy up, let's go live then. I'm like, oh, is this actually happening? Okay, well, we'll go live here. I was trying to go live in my group and it's not working. So we're going live uh, on the wellness boss. I'm just gonna record. Okay. All right, so here's Katrina and Renee going live on a little different platform, but that's all good. We'll just download it and post it over into the, uh, to the group a little later. I figured everybody wants to hear me talk tonight anyways. So we're gonna talk about fat loss versus weight loss because summer is coming and we want you to do it right, not wrong. <laughs> um, all right, so Renee, you take it away. Oh, okay, I can start. Well, <laughs> let's, I guess we should talk about what the difference is first, right? The difference between weight loss versus fat loss and why that difference is important, right? So typically when you lose weight, you can, you can lose any kind of weight. Like when you get on the scale and you've dropped pounds, that weight can come from water, like water loss, losing water, um, losing muscle, and it could be fat as well. So that's what we call weight loss because you just lost weight. Whereas when we specifically talk about fat loss, that we are talking about is just the fat. So take out that muscle, take out the water weight and everything else. And it's just the fat. And that's really what you're striving to do is to actually lose the fat. And you when know, we lose so the fat, we have more of a body transformation. It's exactly. not just shrinking your clothes. You're not, I mean, yes, you have the the scale is talking nicely to you and you're super happy. I mean, this is speaking from experience. So yeah. when I first lost weight like 10 years ago, um, I did it with really low calories and I was skinny fat. I'm like, why do I still have rolls? <laughs> <laughs> what happened here? I, I was low calorie. I was like, you know, every time I stepped on the scale, it was going down. But I think what was happening is I was losing muscle mass. Yes, I was losing some fat, but I wasn't toned at all. I was still had the mummy tummy. You were, you were flubbery. Yes, I was <laughs> fluffy. I was like a skinny fluffy. <laughs> but that, so a little bit of it was for health because I was trying to have more energy because I had my three little kids to look after. So I wanted more energy and everyone said, oh, lose weight, you'll have more energy. It, it that was, that was, um, um, what's the word? A myth? Misnomer? Misnomer? Yeah. Myth. It was wrong. It was wrong. <laughs> so, but that was because I did it the wrong way. I lost weight the wrong way. And, yeah. and now, you know, so this is why we want to talk about weight loss versus fat loss. And even, you know, I have certain family members that get so frustrated because they are trying to lose weight and they just want to lose the weight. And I'm like, I, do you want to lose weight or do you want to lose fat? Because there's a difference and they don't yes. understand. And even um, the way our body works, you know, so um, my mom, for example, okay. So she started doing curves. This was many years ago. She was quite overweight and she started doing curves and she was like exercising and drinking all the water and, you know, eating really healthy. And she was following the meal plans and she was getting so frustrated because the scale wasn't budging. But what was happening, she was having a lot of non-scale victories because she was starting to lose the fat. So she was doing it properly, but her weight stayed the same. And then she started shrinking. But what happens is our fat cells hold water. So we have so much water in us. And we talk about the lymphatic system. We talk about draining all the toxins. We talk about the seven channels of elimination. You need to be paying attention to our lives if you aren't. So Renee and I have already all gone into this. We just completed the cleanse. What does your body do? It likes to hold on to a lot of stuff, holds on to your toxins, holds on to your water. So even though you could be eating like reduced calories and exercising and doing everything right, you still have love handles. You still have a jelly belly. You still have the floppy arms. You're like, what is going on? You need to push, push through that. You need to keep doing that. 
And then finally your body is going to say, okay, I'm holding, holding, holding. You know what? They're still going strong. They are not giving me the extra calories. They are not, you know, letting off this new diet and exercise regime. So whoosh, now I'm going to let it go. And you pee a lot. And I know I was like, Renee, you take it away. And I just totally took over. So no, that's okay. But that's no, but that's, that's quite right. I mean, you want to, you definitely, it, it's all about body recomposition and yeah. you will, you will not see the number on the scale. So you really do. I'm, I'm a big advocate um, of the tape measure and how clothes fit you, because that really is what matters because, you know, if you're just looking at the number on the scale, it's, it doesn't mean you're going to be healthy by getting to that number that you want. So you really do want to do it properly. You still, and yeah. That's the other question I have is like, okay, so do you want to lose weight or do you want to be healthy? Because as health coaches, we're going to do it slow and steady. Yeah. We're going to be the turtle. But what we're doing is we're making sure that everything is waking up on the inside, the way it's supposed to wake up on the inside and then help you lose the weight. So, and this yeah. is just getting you to having your body function properly so that you're yeah. sleeping, you're hydrated, you're managing stress. You're able to deal with all of the million things. I always tell my husband today, I have 1 million things to do. So while you have 1 million things to do, your body needs to be able to handle all of that. Yeah, exactly. Because if you do, if you're just looking at the number on the scale, what will happen and, and um, probably just like this happened to you, Katrina, is you keep losing the weight, but what you do is you affect your metabolism. If you don't, if you're just losing all the weight, you're losing the muscle mass, the organ mass, the water mass, everything, and it'll lower your metabolism. You'll be more fatigued. Um, you know, you will have emotional and psychological stress as well. And you have an increased risk of injury if you keep doing that. So you really do want to make sure that you are doing it the right way. You want to target the fat. You want to keep doing, you know, weight training. You want to do, you can do the cardio, but do the weight training as well, because you want to keep your muscles. You know, you don't want to lose muscle mass. You don't want to do that because having those muscles actually help you burn more calories because muscles yeah. require more calories. So, you know, and as function, we get older, over we, yeah. 40, um, you, you know, we, we run into osteoporosis and we run into all of the other health issues. So how do you create healthy bones? You strength train. How do you create healthy yeah. muscles so that you can withstand, um, what's the word adversity, uh, like pressure, you know, like, uh, more weight. And I mean, physically, emotionally, you have to train your muscles. So yeah. it just, you know, how do you deal with stress? If you are strength training, your body can cope with stress a lot better mentally, emotionally, and physically. Yeah. But even, yeah. um, so like, well, example, I have a reflexology. Everyone knows I do reflexology. Okay. So I had reflexology done a few weeks ago. I went to, um, my board meeting and I went to a little retreat. And so what do reflexologists do when they get together? Well, we treat each other you know, for reflexology. It's like the best. I just laid there and I got pampered. Um, and I gave, I gave everybody a treat of, re of Reiki. So everyone that was there, um, I found their spirit animal because that's one of my gifts in Reiki. So it's just kind of like a little, you know, give and take there. But so the woman that worked on my feet, absolutely amazing. I was like, oh my God, if you were local, <laughs> I would go and see her all the time because I haven't had reflexology in ages. But she looked at me and she's like, Katrina, how's your skeletal system, you know, or your skeletal, however you pronounce it. But basically like I was super crunchy and everything, every place in my feet that she touched like cracked. And I was oh. like, oh my gosh, you're right. But you know what that means to me? I have been focused so much on my immune system and my liver that I wasn't paying attention to my bones. So mm. increase the spinach increase of oranges, increase of calcium. And, you know, the best way to make my bones better, obviously like, okay. I was like, Trina, you got to pick up your weight training. Cause I was kind of 
eh, I've been doing it, not doing it, doing it, not doing it. But you know, for the well, for the last month now, right back into it. And actually, well, this weekend I'm increasing it even more. But um, heavy weights, for like for me, I like to train heavy. Okay, it's as heavy as I can handle. But heavy weights um, and uh, boot camps, you know, and strength training cardio. It's not just running. So that's how I'm going to fix my skeletal system because, and I never even thought about that. I'm always like, let's get your organs working properly. Let's make sure you're pooping. And then I was like, oh yeah, I gotta like take care of my bones. So that's how I I have to, that was an example. Yeah. But that's a short-term thing. The reset's short-term. It's to help you get back on track right? Yeah. That's, that's what it's for. And to, to get those toxins out. So yeah, no. And, the, and I'm the same way it's strength training. You know, it's so important as we get older. Um, I also like doing the heavy weights as heavy as I can. I sometimes go a little more than I should. And then I feel it. I'm like, Oh, I ever did that. Then but, you have doms. Yeah. That's like, Oh, but then even, even when we do the cardio, cause I do orange theory, you know, I love the strength days. Cause it's like inclines on the treadmill and you're like, you're legs are burning, but it's like, eh, that's what they need. <laughs> so you got to push yourself. You do, but you got to do it in moderation as well. You need to allow for the recovery, the proper recovery after. And I've noticed what I did, um, what I was doing, cause I, I go to orange theory a lot. And I, I started watching my watch. I have a Garmin watch and it tells me how many hours of recovery I should have after that. And it keeps telling oh, me cool. you need lighter training Renee. Cause I am, I'm like miss like orange theory. I love it. Like I could do it all the time, but then it's like, I look at my watch and it's like, you need 40 hours of recovery. I was like, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah. Last time I went, I haven't gone for a couple of days cause I'm fighting allergies. So I haven't gone. I'm going to go back tomorrow. But the last one I did, you get, I don't know if you know orange theory, but it's all around splat points and splat points, or you get one splat point for every minute you're in the orange or red zone. And in a typical 60 minute class, they, they tell you, you should get between 12 and 24 splat points. They don't want you to get a whole lot, but you should get a minimum of 12. And that gives you that afterburn effect. I got 32 splat points. The last, <laughs> the last class. Oh my I gosh. Did, you know, I told my partner, he's like, how are you not dead? I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> Said, Do it like to boss to the walls, down. baby. <laughs> Jeez. No, that was pretty bad. I, I don't recommend that, but. You know, it was just one of those days where it was a hard day. <laughs> it was hard. Sometimes they are. But then I know it's like, okay, I can't go back there the next day. I need the recovery time. So that's important as well. And recovery is just as important. I like I train, I work out at home and I segment my body training. So like upper lower, you know, but on Wednesdays is technically my active rest day. But instead of doing active rest, I do my kangoo jumps. But on the Wednesdays, it's the muscle pump. So it's a boot camp muscle pump. So we do Kangoo. And um, oh my God, she kicked my ass last night. So we do like five blocks of cardio, which she like, she, she's like a cardio crazy. And, um, and it was, I was like, holy hell, like it was a lot. And then you do like um, muscle. So then you do some muscle conditioning and then you do cardio and the muscle conditioning. And it was just with a 10 pound weight but it was continuous. Like you go again. And, and I was like, this is so easy. But then today I was like, okay. And it was full body. So I didn't train today because usually I'll train different body parts, but because last night was full body, my body was like, no, but I'm listening to that. I'm not going to force it and push myself into overdrive, which can cause injury. Yeah, exactly. So, so weight loss is one thing. So obviously weight loss, how do you do weight loss? How do you do smart weight loss? Um, yes, it's reducing your calories. We, of course, we're saying to implement strength training in there, but basically you, you drop your calories and make sure that you're still exercising. So you're not losing any of those muscle mass. And if you're doing reduced calories, you want to make sure that you're reducing them gradually. You know, you don't want to just jump on and start like, Oh, I'm going to do 1200 calories because that's like the minimal I can go and then get hungry. It's yeah. Yeah. And if you, and nutritionally wise, you should watch what macros you're eating. You really want to make sure you're getting enough protein. That is so important. Protein really, really helps with the fat loss. 
So um, it's really important too, if you're, if you are a vegetarian or vegan, because getting protein is a little bit harder. There's lots of protein sources that are plant-based, but it's just, you know, you have to make sure you're getting the right amount as well. You don't have to track your macros, but just keep an eye on, make sure you are getting that because that will help your muscles. <laughs> I went to um, a store, a grocery store that I've never been into. And it was a uh, victory meat market. It's downtown Fredericton. I'd never been in there before, but I heard that it was a really good place to get meat. And, uh, and I am a meat eater. Um, but oh my gosh, they had like wrapped cow tongues, um, and a whole bunch of other different organs. And I came home and I was like, I think we're going to go plant-based like maybe just stick to some salmon. <laughs> I was like, Oh, so <laughs> yuck. Um, but yeah, it, and I mean, there's tofu, but tofu, you got to watch because it does have a higher fat content. Um, soy and based a, sometimes, and soy can be highly inflammatory for some people. But exactly. That is an implement inflammatory causing food. Um, and we have our beans, um, and quinoa and some, uh, whole wheat pastas, you know, are pretty high in protein. Um, just looking at those different sources, of course, protein powders. And then, mm, well, there is satian. And that is uh, wheat gluten. Now I have a gluten sensitivity, but I can have satian and it doesn't affect me. Hmm. So, and it's pure wheat gluten, which didn't make sense to me at all, but it's extremely high in protein. And if you eat that with vegetables, like you don't eat it with bread, right? You just eat that with vegetables. It was actually pretty filling. So, Ooh, okay. so that was a, a good, good source, but there are many different plant-based sources for for uh, yeah. vegetarians and, yeah. you know, don't go balls to the walls with your cheese. I know so many vegetarians that are like, I just eat cheese. Um, no, okay. Do you poo? <laughs> <laughs> just wondering. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I love cheese, but yeah, I can't eat a lot of it or otherwise. Yeah. I won't go. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then I'll be like, so bloated. I'll feel like I'm pregnant. Right. Oh, but I love cheese. <laughs> Um, okay. So I do want to talk about fat loss. Like, okay. So we talked about a little bit of weight loss, you know, doing it smart, um, increasing your protein, reducing your calories and exercising. And then there are some tips and tricks that you can do to focus on fat loss. If we really want to, you know, have all the fat, it's going to hold water. So you need to push past that four weeks and then you're going to have that drop. Um, but with fat loss, so we can get pretty particular and you can calculate out your TDEEs. You can choose if you want to calculate your macros or your calories, but pretty much if you find your TDEE and then you want to subtract, you know, cause your TDE is your total daily energy expenditure. So how many calories are you burning? Just sitting around, just sitting and breathing. There's, you know, how many calories you're burning and then you add on your exercise and then you add on like how much food you eat. And then you add on what you do in a day. Like, are, do you sit behind a desk and are you glued to a computer or are you running up and down stairs? Are you a waitress? Are you a post office person? You know, do you walk around? Are you a personal trainer? Like what, what do you do? So all of that comes into effect. It, it is a little bit of taking the time to find out formulas, but once you do, um, you kind of know a little bit better on how much macros you should be eating. And our macros are protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Everything is broken down into protein, carbs, and fats. There are four calories per protein, four calories per carbohydrate, and nine calories per gram of fat. So per gram of protein, per gram of carbon, per gram of fat. So what are some tricks that you can do to lose the fat? I totally just spit as I said that. You can do fasted cardio. Cardio, cardio, cardio is queen. Strength change, strength training is king. So with fat loss, if you do fasted cardio, so first thing in the morning or four hours after you eat, or if you don't have time for fasted cardio, you can do your strength training first. Always start with lifting and then do your cardio afterwards, because we're going to use all the glycogen in your muscles to burn off all of your excess sugar. And then um, we want to create those little muscle tears because if, if you want big muscles, if you want to get toned and start to build them up. So you want to do like um, tempo training 
like slow and controlled because the more slow and focused you are and you're applying heavier weight, you're going to get all those little baby micro tears. And then you want to make sure that you have weight the 24 hours before you train that muscle group again. So that's why you have like an upper lower split. So I can exercise like my, my biceps and my back on Monday, and then I'll do like glutes and hams or glutes and quads on Tuesday, maybe Wednesday cardio. And then Thursday is like triceps, I don't know, something else. So you want to give yourself like a couple days in between before training the biceps again, or just once a week. But if you have all those small micro tears in there, um, then we've used our glycogen for the heavy lift for ripping our muscles. Then you go right into your cardio. So I would suggest either doing like 20, 30 minutes of hit, or you can do like 40 minutes of lifts. So you're slow and steady cardio after your weight training or pound it off and get it done with like 20 or 30 minutes of hit where you're drenched in sweat. But by burning all of the sugars, like you want to burn all the glycogen off in your lift, guess what fuel source you're, you're using for your cardio after your lift fat. fat. So this puts us into prime muscle building, fat burning machine mode, because you're either doing your cardio first thing in the morning where there's no sugar in you. So you're going, you're, you know, after like 15 minutes, you want to do 30 minutes, minimum of 30 minutes, if not more. Okay. Um, unless you're doing hit. So I'm talking like lists, like if you're going to go for a jog or if you're going to walk on the treadmill, you do that for like 40, 60 minutes. But if you're going to do like burpees and mountain climbers and high knees and, you know, like go all crazy and do some like body weight circuits for the next 20, 30 minutes, well, that's going to go right into your fat stores because there's nothing in, in you. You had a good sleep, you wake up and you're going right into it. So your body is like, woo, okay, go right into our fat stores. But then if you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not an early morning person or I don't have time and you're going to weight train later and you've already had food in you, we want to use all of your glycogen, all of your food fuel for that lift. Then by the time you're done your lift, it usually takes like 30, 40 minutes to get your lift in. Then you're going to go into your 20, 30 minutes of hit or your 40 minutes of slow, steady cardio. And now we're using just fat as a fuel source. So that is how we activate the fat loss. It's all in how you're training. And of course, eating healthy because you can't out train a bad diet. And that's true. You know, so you have to make sure that you're eating clean. You can't go and work out and be like, oh, I'm going for like McDonald's. Yeah. Not going to work. Not going to work. I mean, unless you're like 25 and you're amazing and you have like a metabolism of she I don't know. There are people like that, that can do that. I just, I just not to digress, but I just read an article about a guy who's had one Big Mac or more a day for 50 years. Oh my God. Yeah. And, and he's not big, but I'm like, oh my God. And, what? you know, I was reading the comments and uh, somebody's like, he's never going to die. He's got so many preservatives in him. <laughs> it's true. It's like, but I oh think God. of the toxins that are probably sitting in his body. I don't know, but I just, you said McDonald's and that just brought me back to that article. I'm like, holy cow. But Some people, well, you know, I think there's, there's different types of people living among us. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's another topic <laughs> for another day. So yeah. weight loss, fat loss, uh, fat loss is more in the way that you train. You will have faster results. And you will have that um, body transformation, the recomposition when you are focusing on your fat loss and not so much the scale. And um, I, well, in 2020, I did a little challenge and I actually, so I was clean eating. I still had my wine, you know, on the weekends, but I was eating very clean. I was doing the slow and steady cardio, like religiously, I did it seven days a week for, I think it was like 14 weeks. Um, and I went up one pound, but the pictures, like I shrank, I shrank a lot. So the scale did not move. And at, I've been 155, 156 pounds for years. And even though I train all the bloody time, I think my muscle mass just changes. And even when I was training with a trainer for six months, like the best shape I've ever been in 156 pounds, 
five, three, uh, but firm, you know, my clothes fit really good. Yeah. And that's what matters most is that it's better to not even worry about the number on the scale. It's really how you feel in your clothes and how you feel about yourself. Really? Yeah. And, you know, that's what matters, what you see in the mirror, not really what you see on the scale, because especially as we get older, I mean, things change hormonally, we're different. So things do shift in your body and the scale usually does go up anyway, as you get older, it's just, it happens. So, um, you really do have to kind of just say, okay, am I still wearing the same clothes I wore for the last, you know, this you know, however many years and am I comfortable in them? And that's how I usually judge. It's like, okay, especially because of COVID, right? Like I'm going to a, a live event next week and I'm like, okay, am I going to fit in these pants or not? You know, it's <laughs> like, I'm afraid to pull out the nice pants, you know, cause I've been wearing the stretched out jeans and the sweatpants and the leggings and the workout clothes. I'm like, okay, now I got a real rare, real like <laughs> clothes <laughs> you know, like that's going to be the test and yeah. that's what should be the test right because you can get all kinds of testing done too there's like the caliper testing and all that stuff you can get done at yeah um and there's pods and all that stuff but you know it, it really just matters on how you feel but you know if you if you are looking to to fit back into clothes or <laughs> make it a little bit looser then these tips will help and from a nutrition wise, nutrition side, you know, yes, it is, you know, you do have to worry about how you eat as well. Um, and like I said, the protein, try to get like, I think it's like 30 to 35%, you know, protein in your diet um, for every meal. Like when, if you're tracking macros, I'm not a big fan of tracking macros or calories, but, you know, make sure you're getting enough and that will help. Yeah. Sure. And you have to find out what works best for you. Like, are you a tracker? you know, like, does that help you? Has it helped in the past? Because if you're a tracker, then, then track, make sure that you're calculating and you are tracking, you're writing everything down. My fitness pal. I mean, that is the so easiest, like free app. Um, and if you're not a tracker, like if the numbers just kind of freak you out, well then, you know, you've, you've got your hand, you know, like the portion your, your hand and just making sure that you're eating, you know, eating properly, eating clean. So that's, uh, Pretty yep. simple to, to get healthy and, and just realize that it takes time. You know, it is not going to be overnight and be patient with yourself. And I think that's uh, the biggest problem is that we expect results in, you know, three days yeah. or seven well, days. And, yeah. And the problem is we never really see the results because we see ourselves every day. So you really do need to kind of look at pictures like yeah. look at what you were a couple months ago versus today. Um, because you don't, you're used to seeing yourself. You're not going to see if you're getting leaned out or mus more muscular because you see yourself. So yeah, pictures help. I do pictures a lot because it's the only way I can track. I don't notice it. Um, and yeah. you know, if I, if I, if my pants are feeling loose, I'm like, Oh, it's just a good day. And it might be a non bloated day. I don't know. Well, that's the thing too, right? Yeah. Cause you, you know, yeah. As, as we within get older, it's like, you can gain and lose four pounds overnight easily. Yeah. Easily. Right? <laughs> yeah. Depending on where you are in your cycle and everything. So it's just, yeah, our bodies play, play games with us. It's not fun. <laughs> I agree. So awesome. that's all I have to say about weight loss versus fat loss. Yep. Me too. Awesome. That was a good okay. one. Thanks for watching. See ya. Now, if I can turn it off, right? <laughs>